This is the second part of Model 20. By the end of this module, you will be able to sketch a voltaic cell and identify its cathode, anode, and the direction in which electrons and ions move. Also, you will be able to calculate standards EMF, S, cell potentials, the standard potential of a cell from the, st the standard reduction potentials. You also will be able to use reduction potentials to predict whether a, re a redox reaction is spontaneous. And finally, you will relate the potential of the cell to the, the um, delta G and the equilibrium constant. So let's talk about the voltaic cells. In spontaneous redox reaction, electrons are transferred and energy is released. The energy can do work if the electrons flow through an external device. This is a, cell th a voltaic cell. So when you have a redox reaction where you transfer electrons and energy is released and this energy is used to do work, this is called a voltaic cell. Here we have an example. Here we have a system with two electrodes. This is electrode uh, of the left. This is the electrode of the right. And usually the one in the left, basically here we have um, a solution of, this is a solid that is zinc in a solution of zinc sulfate, and this is copper in a solution of uh, sulfate, co copper sulfate. And um, the electrons are going from the sink here, okay, to, through all this black wire, and go to the system, and then go out to, from, uh, through the red one wire, and uh, th those electrons are trapped here in the copper. And that flow of electrons produce a potential. This You can see here that this reaction here produces a potential of 1.10. Um, also, the two solutions, this is a solution of the zinc sulfate, this is the copper, they are they have a bridge between them okay, that allows the solution to uh, interchange uh, some ions okay, to avoid um, overcharge. The oxidation occurs at the anode, and the reduction occurs at the cathode. When electrons flows, charged air in balance, so a salt bridge, usually a U-shaped tube that contains a salt agar solution, is used to keep the charge balanced. So here we have, again, um, a cell. This is a voltaic cell. Here we have, this is the salt bridge, okay, to keep um, the charge balanced between both solution why why we need to keep the the this balance or this charge balance because remember that in and here we have the uh, anode okay and the zinc is uh, experienced the oxidation so that means that it's going to release an electron and it's going to produce a zinc positive so you're going to start to increase here the positive charge in the solution so you need to bring a, a, a counter ion okay, with a negative charge to neutralize that positive charge, okay, to keep those charge balanced. And this salt bridge allows those uh, ions to migrate from one solution to the other one to create that ch uh, charge balance. So the electrons come from the anode, from the oxidation, and, and goes through the voltmeter, and you can read here the potential of, of, the, of the cell and then goes to the copper, where the, here in copper the electrons are going to be trapped by copper plus 2 and you're going to see uh, more copper building up in this uh, strip of copper. Okay, So here we, you can see the copper plus 2 with the electrons that are, has been received from the anode, Okay, they, they, they uh, create the copper solid. In this one we have the zinc as a solid the electrons are removed from the zinc and you produce zinc plus 2 in a solution so you can have here the positive. Also here, when you uh, remove a positive charge, this, this solution will increase the negative charge so that's why you need the positive ion to counteract that um, negative charge that's going to be created in this solution. So always the anode is at the left, the cathode is at the right, in the anode, always you're going to see the oxidation, and the cathode, the reduction, 
you're going to have a solution with the same ion of the solid that you have here that for the um, electrode, there's an electrode, there's another electrode. So this electrode of a sink, okay, is the anode where the oxidation is occurring. Uh, the electron has been transferred from the zinc to copper, and then the copper in solution will uh, bind or will, will receive those electrons, and then it will transform from aqueous to copper solid. In the cell, electrons leave the anode and flow through the wire uh, to the cathode. So here the anode is on this side and goes to the cathode. Here we have uh, that bridge okay, that allows those uh, cations and anions to go for back and forward so they can neutralize the charges that are going to uh, be created when the oxidation or reduction take place. Cations are formed in the anode compartment okay, because if you really if you're removing the electrons you're going to produce a positive species so you're creating cations here and here when you receive okay those as the electrons reach the cathode cations in solutions are attracted to the now negative cathode okay so now this uh, electrons is, is basically charged as a negative so the uh, cations are going to react with those electrons and create the uh, copper the cations gains electrons and are deposit, deposit as metal on the cathode. And remember that the, the sink here is going to react with, is going to be produced by this sink, and this copper is going to be produced by this co copper that is in solution here. <clears throat> the electromotive force is the EMF. Water flows spontaneously one way in a waterfall. It goes all the way from the highest part to the lowest part. Okay, here we have a higher potential energy. Here we have a low potential energy. Comparably, electrons flow spontaneously one way in a redox reaction from high to low potential energy. So usually you have a higher potential energy in the anode, and uh, that allows the electrons to flow through the cathode where you have a lower potential energy. The potential difference between the anode and the cathode in a cell is called the electromotive force, EMF. It is also called the cell potential and is designated as E cell, the potential of the cell. The E represents potential. It's measured in volts. One volt is one joule per coulomb. So for a um, voltaic cell, you have the anode and the cathode. Each of them, the anode and the cathode, is they going to have their own potential. Okay, so you're gonna have a potential for the oxidation in this case of zinc, and for the and you're gonna have another potential for the reduction of copper. And the difference between those potentials are gonna be the EMF or the potential of the cell. The standard reduction potentials. Reduction potentials for many electrodes have been measured and tabulated. Here we have a table with a lot of different reduction half reaction. Oh most of the time the tables are going to represent the potential of reduction okay so that means that this is the potential of reduction so for uh, fluoride the the potential of oxidation will be the inverse okay so it will be negative 2.87 the oxidation potential for the reverse process okay so but mo basically all the time the tables that you're going to see are going to show the potential of reduction, the standard reduction potential for the half reactions. The values are compared to the reduction of a hydrogen as a standard. So they measure this potential by using a standard electrode that it, most of the time is the hydrogen uh, electrode. Now the standard hydrogen electrode. This electron is the one that it has been used as the reference to determine the potential energy of the potential of the cell of the other's electrodes. Okay, so if you have if you create a, a um, an, an electrode and you want to know the potential of that electrode, you may use you, you need to use the uh, standard hydrogen electrode and create the cell, and you will see the the potential that it will be uh, show up is going to be the potential of your new electrode. So the standard hydrogen electrode um, is um, used as a reference 
by definition, the reduction potential for hydrogen is zero volts. Okay, so if for if you have another electrode that you don't know the potential and you combine them, and you you can have a positive or a negative potential is going to be that the potential for that new electrode. Okay, so the standard hydrogen electrode can act as an anode or as a cathode. It is going to depend on the potential uh, of the other electrode. So if the other electrode has a positive potential, this uh, standard hydrogen electrode is going to act as the anode. It's going to be oxidized, okay, because the other electrode is going to be reduced. But if the other electrode has a, a negative potential, reduction uh, potential, then the standard hydrogen electrode is going to act as a cathode because now this one is going to be reduced and the other one is going to be oxidized, okay? So this standard hydrogen electrode could be used as a cathode or as an anode. And here we have basically the uh, equation for this type of um, electrode, two protons plus two electrons producing hydrogen. So the standard cell potential. The cell potential at standard conditions can be found through this equation. The standard potential of the cell is going to be at, equal to the standard potential of the cathode, the reduction potential, minus the reduction potential of the anode. Okay, so these are the reduction potential. So we just need to look what is the um, elements or the, the species that is in the cathode and look for the table for the potential of reduction, which one is in the anode, and then look for the table for the potential of reduction, substitute these values here, and we're going to have the potential of the cell. Because cell potential is based on the potential energy per unit of charge, it is an intensive property. So the potential, uh, standard potential of the cell is an intensive property. So the cell potential, we have here again the same uh, uh, voltaic cell that we presented in a few slides ago, the zinc here in the anode and the copper here in the cathode. For the anode, in this cell, the reduction potential is 0 0.75, minus 0 0.75, 76, sorry, volt. This is the potential for this half cell. And for the cathode, for this one, is 0 0.34 volts, positive 0 0.34. So the potential of the cell is going to be equal to the potential of reduction of the cathode minus the potential of reduction of the anode. This values you can obtain it from a table okay so remember that you're going to have a table of the standard reduction potential so you look for and uh, you need to know okay we have the anode here is zinc so look for the table for the reaction of zinc and that will be the potential of reduction it's going to be zero minus 0 0.76 then the cathode here is copper so let's look for the table to copper and you're going to see the reaction of copper and the, the potential reduction of copper of uh, positive 0 0.34 and then you substitute these values here and you're going to have a, uh, the, uh, the, the results of positive 1.10 volts for this uh, voltaic cell. Oxidizing and reducing agents. The more positive the value of the potential of reduction, the greater the tendency for reduction under standard conditions. So as higher the potential of reduction of, 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 an, of an ion, Okay, higher the tendency to be reduced. So if you have a very high potential uh, of reduction for one species, that means that that is a really good oxidation oxidizing agent because he is going to be uh, reduced. So he is going to induce to ox to to oxidize another species. So the strongest the oxidizer have the most positive reduction potentials. The stronger reducer have the most negative reduction potential because here we have, uh, for example, the the ones that have the, the, the last strength as an oxidizing agent, okay? And they are basically uh, uh, negative values. So these basically are weakest uh, oxidizing agent. Free energy and redox reaction. Spontaneous redox reactions produce a positive cell potential, or EMF, the potential is equal to the potential of reduction minus the potential reduction of the oxidation. Okay, so remember that we report just the potential as reduction, but 
up here we have a reduction and here we have the oxidation here we have the cathode and here we have the anode so don't um, misunderstand even though we are looking here for the potential of reduction but we are looking for the potential of reduction of the species that is in the anode that it has been oxidized okay but we use the potential of reduction to calculate the potential of the cell note that this is true for all redox reactions not only for voltaic cells since Gibbs free energy is the measure of spontaneity positive EMF corresponds to negative Delta G and for remember that for spontaneous for, for spontaneity uh, the Delta G must be uh, a negative value how do they relate Delta G is equal to minus N F time F time E, where N is the number of moles that of electrons that are transferred in the redox reaction. So if you are moving two electrons, the N is two. If you are moving one electron has been transferred in this uh, redox reaction, the N is one. The F is the far Faraday constant, that is this value, and the E is the potential of the cell. So free energy, redox, and the equilibrium constant. How is everything related? Here we have the delta G, the equilibrium constant, the potential. Is there any way that we can combine all of these three concepts in one equation? And the answer is yes. It's called the Nernst equation. We know that delta G is equal to the standard delta G plus RT, the natural logarithm of Q. And we use Q because we don't know if we are at equilibrium or not. But also we define in the, in the last previous slide that the delta G is equal to minus NFE. So we can substitute the NFE in these two uh, values here. So we can have now this equation as minus NFE equal to minus NFE standard plus RT, the natural logarithm of Q. Now we can divide the whole this equation by minus nfe my minus nf sorry and by doing that we substitute this under uh, under this value we cancel the nfe and the minus and we're going to have the potential is equal to the standard potential minus rt divided at by nf times the natural logarithm of q but let's change this uh uh, natural logarithm to the logarithm of, of base 10 and now we have that the potential is equal to the standard potential minus 2.303 RT divided by NF the log of Q okay so this value comes when we change from natural logarithm to a logarithm in, in base 10 and using the standard thermodynamic temperature and the constant R and F we we'll simplify this equation that the potential is going to be equal to the standard potential minus 0 0.0592 divided by n times the log of q and this is called the nurse equation where we can relate the potential the moles and the um, concentration that could be at equilibrium and with this we finish our model of chapter 20 of electrochemistry Thank you.